Greetings, agents. Some anomalies are strange occurrences that make us question the permanence of normalcy. We'll explore historical records that describe how a small town in early America was irreversibly immersed in one such occurrence. Item number SCP-4003 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A 2km area surrounding SCP-4003 and Provisional Site-1200 has been designated as a protected area. Civilians entering the perimeter are to be intercepted and turned away. Only personnel specializing in archaeology, paleontology, and geology may be assigned to Provisional Site-1200. All extracted artifacts and fossils recovered from SCP-4003 are to be stored inside Eleven's intensive care item storage after being catalogued. Excess fossils deemed to be non-anomalous may be donated to the Museum of the Rockies via a Foundation Front organization, the Certain Canadian Paleontologist Group. Any mentions of the Town of Temperance found in historical documents and period journals are to be expunged. Description SCP-4003 is the group designation for the archaeological remains of the town of Temperance and its citizens found in the Hell Creek Formation near Jordan, Montana. Fossils, objects, and remains found within SCP-4003 date to the Upper Cretaceous era. Due to the roughly similar location of discovery and date at time of origin, investigation of a connection between SCP-4003 and SCP-3834 is underway. The town's few buildings included a saloon, sheriff's office, trading post, general store, and domestic buildings along its main street. Temperance primarily served as a rest stop for caravans heading to Helena from the Minnesota Territory and had a small permanent population. The calculated population is estimated to have been 40 civilians and 10 horses and other livestock. Though so little information on the town is available, it is mentioned in the journals of Gold Rush settlers between 1859 and 1866. Though the exact date of the town's disappearance is currently unknown, it is believed to have vanished in November of 1866. Following its disappearance, Temperance and its population manifested in the late Cretaceous era about 66 million years ago. It is believed most, if not all, of its inhabitants and livestock perish from oxygen poisoning to the increased levels of the chemical compound present in the Earth's atmosphere at the time. Any survivors were then likely to have perished from exposure, disease, famine, and the predatory megafauna. The town of Temperance reappeared in its exact geographical location in the Upper Cretaceous period. The lithology of SCP-4803 and the surrounding area indicate the climate of the area was subtropical due to its proximity to the western interior seaway, sharply contrasting the aridity of modern Montana. Below are a brief list of fossils and artifacts found in the CP-4003. No recovered dinosauria fossils have been noted to be fettered. Document 4003-1221-Specimens Specimens Quantity Notes Triceratops process 3. Two specimens are believed to be juveniles. Archaeoraptor temertiorum 12. Numerous specimens have been found to have suffered various bone fractures. Thoracosaurus neocesariensis 5. N.A. Detail for Dolan Borax 14. Many of the recovered specimens are incomplete. Struthiomimus sedens 4. N.A. Canis lupus familiaris 1. The recovered specimen is missing most extremities save for the right hind leg. Equus ferus caballus 6. Most recovered specimens are incomplete and have been found in scattered concentrations across SCP-4003. Gallus gallus domesticus 3. All recovered specimens are incomplete. Tyrannosaurus rex 2. One of the recovered specimens is missing its head and several vertebrae. Homo sapien 26. Specimens vary in quality. 
there are one infant, three youth, and 22 adult specimens recovered. Document 4003-1222-Objects SCP-4003 was discovered in 1871 by gold miners from the nearby Everwood mine. Foundation field operatives were dispatched to the dike site to evaluate the reports of human remains being found deep underground in newly created tunnels. Though originally believed to be Homo neanderthalensis specimens, the anatomy of the found skulls were identical to that of a Homo sapiens. Level 2 hypnosuggestive agents were administered to all involved civilians, and the Foundation purchased ownership of Everwood Mine. Provisional Site 1200 was established near SCP-4003 shortly afterward, and the area of discovery was excavated. An investigation by the Department of Temporal Anomalies is currently ongoing, as is archaeological and paleontological work on SCP-4003. Addendum 1. Recover Journals On July 26, 2008, a metal safe found to be in good condition was recovered from SCP-4003. Its contents are anomalously well preserved and show no signs of aging. Items found in the safe include musket balls, revolver rounds, a rosary, daguerreotypes, early photographical techniques, and a journal. The journal is labeled as belonging to one Pendleton Tweed, a sheriff's deputy in Temperance. A collection of entries following Temperance's disappearance is available below. Note, the presented entries have been revised and edited to be easily legible by modern standards. Journal Logs 58th of November, Anno Domini 1866 Sheriff Bond and I still can't make sense of what happened. Everyone remembers a white light, and then nothing. Me and the sheriff too. We all got out with that head spawning and feeling like we drank the town dry. Old Pete, Mary, and Annette's kids was all dead. So well as most of the chickens, and one of the horses. The out-of-towners were alright. Say they saw the same thing too. But what's strangest is the boonies. It ain't how it used to be. It's all green now, and with trees too. I'd never seen nothing like it before. It's like I was in paradise when I see it. Sheriff Bone says it ain't right though. Say something's very wrong. Sheriff Bone's fixing to hold a town meeting with the outsiders and all the folks at first hour tomorrow. Whispering the dead tonight. 68th of November, Anno Domini 1866. Everyone's real nisi about the situation. Force are grieving, and the out-of-towners are itching to take off. Sheriff Bone says no one can leave, lest they is part of the scoring pose he's getting together. Says we need to know what's around us. Something took the chickens too. Left some strange tracks. Sure as hell ain't no coyote. Damn thing left tracks looking like real big chicken tracks. Must I come at night, cause ain't no one seen it. One of the dogs brought in a barming too big to be a rat. It looked ugly and had a long face. Ain't never seen nothing like it, but he ain't seen to mind. That old boy ate it anyway. Father Jacob says we need to be strong and God will guide us. I pray we figure out what's happening soon and for the Posey's safe return. 90th of November and the Domini 1866. A bunch of the old towners startled Merlin in the middle of the night and sold everything they could from his shop before taking off with some horses. They were in a real damn hurry, I reckon, cause they left behind their caravan. From the looks of things, they was prospectors heading to California. A lot of digging tools and some dynamite. We're burning Merlin later, but we is low on supplies now. Father Jacob and I are working on rationing what we got, but it won't last too long. Father Jacob keeps saying he's hearing things at night, but he don't know why. He's asked for me to stay out by the church and keep an eye out tonight. I reckon since we're burying Merle, I might as well stay as well. I pray Merle goes to heaven. He ain't deserve what come to him. 
It's all my fault for not being able to protect him. 20th of November, Anno Domini, 1866. I swear on God, Father Jacob and I saw a demon last night. It was big, like a person, and it walked on two feet, but it had a neck like a snake and eyes like one too. It was making these sounds from hell, and it was digging at Merle's grave. We wasn't able to bury him too deep because of the mud, and I saw the monster eating that old Merle's body. I fired at it, but it was too dark for me to hit the dang thing. Father Jacob says, we in hell, being punished by God for not believing. He went and told everyone, and now they're in panic. But he says, so long as we keep praying, God will spare us from his wrath. I didn't think I was a sinner. No man's perfect, but I reckon I try being as close to God as one can. I reckon I got a lot to think about. But now, the whole town has gone to the dogs. Everything is panicking over what Father Jacob says. I put my foot down and told them to quit it. Told them to pack it up and take it to the church if they wanted to proselytize. Can't have him scaring everyone like that, even if, if we're surrounded by devils. Tonight, I will pray for forgiveness and for protection. 21st of November, Anno Domini, 1866 Sheriff Bone, Red, and Jeremiah came back, but they was missing a horse. Sheriff Bone says a giant devil, with a head as big as a man, snuck up on them when they was sleeping, and picked up a horse in its mouth, then tossed it like it was a toy. They hid and watched it up, until the devil went away, though was big as a building, and longer than two, they say. The others say they see more. Smaller, bigger, and of all colors. Food is scarce, and these rat varmints ain't big enough to feed one person, let alone dirty. Safety and food will be in my prayers tonight. 23rd of November, Anno Domini 1866. I reckon Father Jacob was right, saying we're seeing hell after seeing what happened yesterday. We were also attacked by a dozen of little demons, all of them with long necks thick like knives, and claws like vultures. They came from nowhere and killed a bunch of folk before we was able to write them off. Sheriff Bowen and Father Jacob got into it real nasty after. Sheriff Bowen wanted to try and eat from the remains of these things. Father Jacob accused him of being a blasphemer, trying to tempt us to sin by eating the flesh of a demon. Says God is watching us. He sees him at night. But that ain't stopping Sheriff Bowen. I reckon I am a sinner after all. I will pray for God for forgiveness tonight. I know what I have done, but I beg you, my lord, to wash away my sin. 25th of November, Anno Domini 1866 The night those demons attacked us, Father Jacob led the townsfolk to destroy all alcohol in town. They smashed it all up in the church, then locked themselves in there till just today. They says that was praying for our town, says me and Sheriff Bowen is sinners, and the reason we've been cursed to be in hell. I still don't know what I've done to make everyone deserve this. Sheriff Bowen says I ain't that fault, but the townsfolk won't even look me in the eye no more. I got half a mind to go over and put lead between Father Jacob's sides for making the bad situation worse, but then I'd be the same as he. Tonight I will pray for forgiveness again as well as for the rain to stop, the damn frogs won't let me sleep. 28th of November, 1st of December, Anno Domini, 1866 Lots of folks are dead. Sheriff Bowen is dead. The rain won't stop. I ain't sleeping what feels like forever. A giant monster like I'd never seen before came in, making the whole town shake with its footsteps. It was bigger than any building I seen before, and he walked right up to the pile of demons and started eating. Father Jacob and a few others came scrambling out of the church, trying to exorcise it, but it ate him. Was the scariest thing. One second he was there, shouting about Christ, and then all we was hearing was the rain. 
Then it roared the worst sound I've ever heard. Something fitting the demon it was. The townsfolk tried shooting at it, but the damn thing didn't even care. Just made it anger. All I could do was sit there and watch while Jerry Bone ran out and grabbed some dynamite. The monster was fixing it to kill the townsfolk, but Jerry Bone got its attention, blew the damn thing heads clean off, and himself too. The rain got worse before we could even try and move the demon away. I made everyone go home after that. Ain't no sense in being outside near all them bodies if it's gonna make more of him come. I don't reckon I know what to pray for no more. I saw God last night. I saw his light in the sky, shining so bright next to the moon. It was beautiful. I begged him for forgiveness. I begged him to learn what I did wrong, but God ain't answering me. I've been begging God for the rain to stop, for forgiveness and clarity. I see him in the sky, in the day now too. He's so bright behind these clouds. I can feel his touch. But God ain't happy with me. I know my punishment is coming, and God Almighty himself is delivering it. One last time, I will pray for forgiveness tonight. End law. All that remains of the town of Temperance and its inhabitants is an anomalous site and confidential documents and relics reminding us of this tragedy. A horrible nightmare, impossible to explain with the knowledge of their time, and of which we can barely formulate incomplete theories today. In a world where normalcy is constantly threatened, we can only appreciate and protect the precious moments of our present. Help us continue documenting anomalies by leaving your suggestions and comments in the chat box below. I am Virosdis Anonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.